Well, good morning, everyone. Well, it's about 10 past five, Thursday morning, 30th of December, getting very close to the end of the year. And look at this beautiful view that I've got this morning of the city. I haven't been in this spot for so long. I was here on the 27th of December, 2016, with my Nikon D7100, and I took a great panorama, probably one of the best panoramas of the city that I've ever taken. And I'm not really here to replicate this image. I was just looking at it a few days ago and go like, oh, I just want to come back here again. So this morning, we've got perfect conditions. The sun's already up really about 10 minutes ago, but it's way down behind the clouds there. And I'm hoping that as the sun comes up and hits just the top of these buildings, we're gonna get some beautiful light. I want to do a panorama. I'll get myself set up and then we'll talk about what we're going to do today. So I've got my tripod here. I got my bald head on, but before I actually do anything with the bald head, I want to make sure that my tripod is 100% level because this is very critical when I'm doing such a wide panorama. And you see the view now that I'm actually going to try to record. Now people are saying, why shoot a panorama? Because I've got a Tekina 11 to 20. At 11 mils, I can get just about all of this. Well, it's megapixels. My Nikon D500 is just a 20 megapixel camera. So I could get all this with one shot, but it's 20 megapixel. If I start zooming in, I'm not gonna see a lot of detail. If I shoot a panorama, I'm gonna get 20 megapixel per image. So I'm gonna end up with at least a 100 megapixel image, five times the size. And this means I can blow the panorama much bigger. I'm gonna take the bald head off here very quickly. And I'm gonna make sure that my tripod is 100% level. As you can see, it's just a little spirit level. And I've drilled a little hole here just to fit in here. And I'm looking here and it's very close here. So I'm just gonna end it up a little bit more. I was pretty close at the start. Now I'm level every way. I'll put the pano head on, screw it down tight. Got to make sure it's very tight. What I was talking about the bald head is if I was using this again, I would have to put this on and make sure that this plate here is level because if it's not, I'm going to get an arc or it's going to get a tilt and you're going to lose a lot of height. Now, some people might say, well, it's okay if it's not 100% level. Well, you're right, it's okay. But the idea is that you want the most megapixel in your pano. If you zoom out to 18 mils and then you have to crop to 24, Look at all the megapixels you're losing. Get it right, get it done properly. Now I've already done a tutorial on parallax error, having to use a L bracket to push the camera back. And some people say, well, is parallax error such a problem? It is and it isn't. For here, I don't have anything in the foreground. So parallax error isn't gonna be a major factor in my image because everything's so far away from me. But if I had things much closer, let's say if there was a road and there was like power poles in front of me or cars, then I would want to make sure that I had no parallax error in my image. Because if I've got something close to me and something far, as I'm taking the image, the image, let's say the car that's close to me, will seem out of whack. And when you start stitching the panorama, the program won't be able to stitch properly and it'll be like double vision. You'll go like, oh, the card looks like it's twice there. That's because of your parallax error. I like doing things correctly. So there's my bracket here and I'll put it on here. Now I know where this one sits. It sits about here. We'll put it in and look, can you see how far away I am? This is how far back I have to be with my Nikon 18 to 140 mil lens. So there, so it's on here. Just make sure everything's nice and level, beautiful. Now you can see I'm undoing this little nut here and I'm on 15 degrees. Now I rarely shoot any closer than about 35 mils. So I'm on 18 mils at the moment. We're on F11, ISO 100, is I'm gonna zoom in. Now this is what you have to do when you shoot a panorama. You really wanna to look to make sure that everything's right. That looks really good, there. I'm gonna put a two second timer. And what I'm gonna do is just expose for the center shot. Everything on my camera is in manual mode. White balance is in manual. I've actually just said it for sunny. My exposure is in manual. So I fix my exposure, I fix my shutter speed. If you're shooting an aperture priority, as you're gonna move along, your shutter speed's gonna change. That could actually affect your panorama. You might have a brighter image and dark image, and when you go to stitch them all together, you're gonna to have problems. So remember, 
normally you shoot in manual mode and you set everything up so there's no variation in your image. Sure, one side could be slightly darker, but you can correct that in Lightroom or any editing program that you do. Beautiful. Now, I'll come back over here, all the way to the edge here, take another shot. What I'm seeing is just the exposure levels between all of them. Come back over here. Great. That looks perfect. My settings here, 1 50th, F11, ISO 100. Those settings might be different for you. They're the settings that I'm using on this day. Remember when I first started, I said, I'm just wanting that golden glow. It's just about to happen. So I'm going to take a panorama and this is going to be my test panorama. Most of the time, I like shooting right to left. This is how my program stitches them up. So I'm going to start from my left and go to the right. Looks really good. One, remember two seconds. This is going to look really nice. Actually facing the camera. What I forgot to mention is that when I shoot a panorama, I always shoot at least one frame either side more. This is what it looks like when I first open it up and I tell it to auto align. You don't count for this curvature, you're gonna to have to crop and you're gonna lose some of your image. So it's digital, shoot at least one frame either side. So one thing that you have to remember, especially this early in the morning, or if you're shooting late in the afternoon, is that you shoot a panorama, you're gonna wait a few minutes before you take your next one because you want a few different panoramas with different light. So here, I'm just waiting for that golden light to hit the buildings. But by the time the light hits the buildings, I would have had to readjust my settings. How do I make sure that I get the correct exposure again? Well, by setting up my camera exactly the same place that I set up the first time, right in the center of these buildings, because that's where the light is reflecting. This is where I'm going to get overexposure. So I put my camera back in there and say, okay, quickly take a test shot. I don't really look too much on the histogram. I just look on my RGB highlights because the histogram is just gonna tell me, yeah, I might be very close, but using my RGB highlights, I call it the blinkies, it's telling me very quickly if I'm overexposed and I keep reducing it until those blinkies are gone. Modern cameras are so great to re bring out the shadows that as long as I haven't overexposed my highlights, I know that I can get all my shadows back up. Look at that, the light has just come up. Now, it caught me by surprise because the light was behind, the sun was behind the clouds and all of a sudden, bang, all the light is on the buildings here, but it's beautiful. We'll take a quick test shot. Look at our RGB highlights, no blinkies. Let's get going. Remember, I'm taking one exposure too much. One. I want to quickly check to make sure I don't have blinkies. Can you see the clouds? Look at that, this is perfect. This is just so nice. Now you're wondering, why am I here this morning? I could have slept in and come in the afternoon. Well, the sun's the other way in the afternoon. And all this, all the buildings here would be in the shade. Would have been great if it was a stormy day and all that, but when you've got light, you work with the light. I got up at 3.30 in the morning to be here at this time of the day, so it takes time to set up. I don't want to rush. And something you have to remember is that you need to overlap your images by about a third. Around a quarter is about the minimum you want. You don't want more than half as well, because if you overlap by more than half, sometimes the program that you're using to stitch them will think, well, these two images are the same. You'll skip something. Remember, between about a quarter and a, and a third. A third gives the program enough to stitch all the buildings together, saying, okay, well, that's what it looks like. But look at the clouds here now. The sun has gone behind the clouds, and instead of having that pretty bright light on the buildings, it's more subdued. Now, I'm looking here, and the color here at the moment is a bit flat. But if you're shooting in JPEG, now I don't recommend shooting panos in JPEG, but if I'm shooting in JPEG, and I want to get more warmth in here, then I just increase my white balance. I grab the white balance here, I've set the sunny, let's go to cloudy. We'll take a test image. Wow, that looks so nice. Yes, let's go back to here.
Now, something that I advise people, when you're first starting out shooting panoramas, here it's fairly easy. The edges are very different. But sometimes, like when you put them all up on your computer and you're looking, everything looks the same. So what I tell people is just like when I shoot a HDR image and all that, is that when I finish a panorama, like I finish this one here, I put my hand over the, the camera and I just take one shot there. So I end up with a black frame. With that black frame there, when I put them on the computer, I'm just looking for black frames. I say, okay, well, there's a black frame, there's a black frame. That's a set, put it in. And when I put them on my computer, that's what I do. I don't put them all in one folder. So I'll name them set one, set two, set three, set four, set five. So I know that all these images are different. We might just take one more, but I'm gonna wait till the light gets a little bit more. What I want now for my last pano here is I want the light to be everywhere around the front here. And you can see it's creeping in. Just like two minutes ago, we only had light all the way over to the right. Now, the light is starting just to come up even. Why? Because the sun's getting quite high in the sky. Six o'clock. Let's take one more and this will be the last one. But look, it's so bright now. Oh, geez. So I was at 160th. I got to come down. Wow. I'm at 1200th. No, 1160th. I'm using live view but you really don't need to use live view when you have a panel rotator but this is just helping me this morning if you don't have a panel rotator and you're just using just like a normal slide then you're going to need live view to make sure that you've got the overlap now look at this this is just crazy the light is changing so quickly I started and it was a bit dark over here and it was a bit bright over here now it's the opposite the bridge here is lit up but over here it's dark because the cloud the light is just coming through the clouds very differently this is where you've really got to pay attention so much i'm wrapped i've got what i want i am so happy with the panos that i've got already so as you can see i've changed location i was going to finish the video at the top of the kangaroo point cliffs but as i left i thought hang on how about i show everyone why I chose that location and why I didn't take my panoramas from where I am now. Now I've already taken a panorama here. Look in the background, can you see all the buildings are right in front of me? I'm staring straight at them. At the top of the Kangaroo Point Cliffs, I was looking to like on an angle towards them and I can see all the yachts and all that. Now you can see there's a few yachts behind me, there's some yachts further up the, the river here. They're all horizontal. I can't see like how long they are and I don't have a very good visual aspect of what the yachts look like. From the top of the Kangaroo Point Cliffs, they look much different. Now I've also had to change lenses because at the top of the Kangaroo Point Cliffs, I was using my Nikon 18 to 140 at around 30, 35 mil. Here, I've had to use my Takina 11 to 20 at around 18 mils to get because look look how high these buildings are and also the perspective of these buildings are so different i'm going to get a bit more warpage a bit more distortion in them and like i stated up the top there why i didn't just take a single image this was shot from here at 11 mils with the tequila can you see all the buildings they're all leaning in it's a single image now take a look at the panorama can you see the difference do the buildings look distorted? No, they don't. There's very little distortion because I've just taken image by image by image because instead of taking 11 mils, I've taken it at 18 mils in portrait orientation. So I don't have distortion. And this is the key. This is why I shoot panoramas when I'm faced in a situation like this because that single image, 11 mils, it's only a 20 megapixel. This image here is around 120 megapixel, much bigger and less distortion. And I'm getting more depth. So if I want to zoom in, I can see everything more clearer. Also means I can blow the image up much wider. And think about the perspective. What do you want to show? If I really want to show all these buildings up close and personal, this is where I want to be. But if I want an overall view of the city to show people what 
Brisbane looks like early morning, then that's where you have to be, at the top of the Kangaroo Point Cliffs. In the description below, I'm going to put down where I took the photo. So if you live in Brisbane or if you come and travel to Brisbane and you want to take a similar panorama, you've got a very good idea of where I was. Now, if you found value in this video, give me a big thumbs up. I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Stay safe, enjoy photography, and I hope this has given you an idea of how I shoot my panoramas. And I'll see you next time.